Welcome back to another NFL video and especially over this Radio Row week with a lot of insiders in Las Vegas for the Super Bowl, it seems like there's been a lot of buzz regarding the Vikings and trading up for a quarterback. Dan Orlovsky on the Pat McAfee show yesterday for one said the Vikings won't be able to afford Justin Jefferson breaking the bank and Kirk Cousins as well and he even suggested trading Justin Jefferson in a package to get the number three overall pick from the Patriots and Colin Cowherd few days earlier proposed a absurd trade which included the Patriots sending number three overall for Justin Jefferson along with this year's number 11 pick and next year's 2025 pick when they'd have a rookie QB so I think that's insane and I think when you're talking about the Vikings there's definitely a fair argument to be made whether you're paying Kirk Cousins or you're going to be trading up for a quarterback if it's at number three or something around then but I do not think that that would involve a Justin Jefferson in the trade and trade ups we've seen in the past a lot of it is just focused on draft capital and if the Patriots don't love any of the quarterbacks and if they could get next year's first or a second or third round pick and then this year's first then that could be enough I don't think Justin Jefferson will be involved I think the quarterback is more of a question Jefferson will get paid and stay Jets owner Woody Johnson at the NFL honors was saying we need a backup quarterback we didn't have one last year and obviously they had Zach Wilson former number two overall pick so they definitely had a more than qualified backup but it's just more signs pointing to Zach Wilson being on his way out whether they cut him or trade him Brett Veach Chiefs DM said the priorities for this offseason will be re-signing Chris Jones and Legereus Sneed but he admitted it's going to be extremely hard it's a Super Bowl defense it's the best defense Patrick Mahomes has had Chris Jones you know he's a difference maker they had to sign him after their week one loss when he was holding out Legereus Sneed part of one of the best secondaries in all of football so it would be very hard to get both but they're they're definitely going to try their best. And now for the NFL awards last night, there's some controversy. Defensive player of the year, Miles Garrett, it's inevitable he was going to win at some point. But a lot of fans, in particular Steelers fans, are mad that TJ Watt's numbers don't exactly line up for him not winning this award. Rookie of the year was a sweep by the Houston Texans, CJ Stroud on the offensive side, and Will Anderson on the defensive side. Coach of the year is going to be Kevin Stefanski of the Cleveland Browns. So they have defensive player of the year, coach of the year, assistant coach of the year and comeback player of the year that I'll get to. He beat out D'Amico Ryans and Dan Campbell. Offensive player of the year, Christian McCaffrey beats out Tyree Kill, C.D. Lamb, and a couple others. 20 plus touchdowns leading this 49ers team. No complaints with that. Joe Flacco wins comeback player of the year, but because of the new voting system, Damar Hamlin, who is the favorite to win it all year, he actually had more first place votes than Flacco, but Flacco got the second and third place votes, so it accumulated to him winning the award. Lamar Jackson won MVP. It was near unanimous. He got 49 out of 50 first place votes with one first place vote going to Josh Allen. And then one of the most highly regarded awards, Walter Payton Man of the Year, is going to be going to Cameron Hayward of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So let me know what you guys think. It seems like the most controversy was around DeMar Hamlin versus Joe Flacco for comeback player of the year because what DeMar Hamlin actually had to come back from by definition. And then TJ Watt getting snubbed for Miles Garrett in defensive player of the year. Subscribe if you like these videos, that's what's going on in the NFL.